The UX90 and UX180 cameras have a number of different ways to manipulate the color of the image so you can paint the image in camera. I know a lot of people like to prefer to paint the image in post, but when you're doing live production, you don't have post to go to. Or if you want to make your work in post a lot easier, you know, getting the look right in camera first can save you a tremendous amount of time trying to match images in post. So we're going to take a look at some of the ways that you can manipulate the color in these cameras. First way is to go into the scene file menu and look at the matrix command. There are five different matrices that you can use, and these are basically different color palettes. So you can just point the camera to scene and switch between the different matrices and see which one looks best to you or looks most appropriate. The matrix is the simplest way to change the color palette. Then we have a couple of ways that we can adjust the intensity and the character of the color. We can go first of all to the scene file menu and look at the chroma level command. And this adjusts saturation. The lower you set it, the more muted and paler the color becomes until you get all the way at the bottom at negative 70 and there's just no color whatsoever. The higher you set it, the more saturated the colors have become, the more rich the color becomes. Then you have the chroma phase. This actually rotates the color wheel. I'm going to use the term of a color wheel because it really helps understand what we're looking at. So we're going to show a color chart. And as you adjust the chroma phase, you can see that it's actually rotating the colors around the color wheel. So red can become a little bit more orange or a little bit more pink, etc. as we adjust the chroma phase. Then we can get a lot more technical. We can go into the RB gain control setting. And here, this lets you adjust the individual red and blue channels. You can add a little bit of red and pull out a little bit of blue or the other way around, but you can really tint and adjust the color. You could make it a little bit more yellow, a little bit more green, depending on how you manipulate these two colors, you can really paint the image very differently. Then, for the ultimate in color correction and, and manipulation capability, the UX180 has a 16 pole color correction option. It's called the color correction setting. And when you first press this menu item, it can be a little intimidating. There's a whole lot of boxes and they all have one or three characters in them. It says R and MG. What is that? It, it's nothing to be scared of. We're gonna show you a simple example of how you work with this using a color wheel chart. This is a chart I got from the cam book from DSC Labs. And you'll see on this chart, there are 12 colors, 12 color wedges. Well, what we're really looking at is the first six primary colors, primary being primary for a video. And those are red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. So there are six main colors. And then on this color wheel, we have six intermediary colors. They're halfway in between. So halfway between red and magenta, you find a slightly reddish magenta color. <laughs> halfway between green and yellow, you're going to find a slightly greeny yellow color. And those, we're going to be able to adjust each one of those individually. Actually, that's only 12 colors. The camera's capable of adjusting up to 16. So I'll show you how those correlate. Each of the primary colors have their own menu item here in the color correction menu. And then there's also the colors in between. Those are made from mixing one part of red and one part of magenta gives us R-MG, red and magenta. That's for the color in between red and magenta, very simple. So if we look between cyan and green, we'll find a menu option for cyan-G. CY-G, that's for the color that's halfway between cyan and green. Where it gets a little more complex is that there are some color vectors where instead of having one color between the two primaries, there's actually two shades between the two primaries that we can manipulate. So for example, between magenta and blue, there are two different options. There's MG, MGB, that's two parts magenta, one part blue, and there's also MG, B, B. That's one part magenta, two parts blue. So you can see that the magenta is represented by the straight up MG. Then there's MG, MG, B. That's taking one third of a step towards blue. So two thirds magenta, one third blue. And then the next one is obviously two thirds blue, one third magenta, and then we have blue. So now you can identify every color on the wheel. Let's go ahead and actually manipulate one. When we select, for example, let's go with red. 
we push the red button and it comes up with two options, sat and phase. Well, we've already introduced what these do when we looked at chroma level, which is basically saturation, and chroma phase, which is how you tint that color along the color wheel. It works the same way here, except it's working on only that individual color. So let's manipulate the red and you'll get an idea of what you can do with this. First, we're gonna change the saturation. We're gonna take the saturation way down and you can see that red is getting paler and paler, but it's not affecting any of the other colors. Now let's crank the saturation all the way up and it's getting richer and more vibrant, but generally the other colors aren't being affected. Now let's look at the phase. If we set that phase to positive, it's gonna move the color along the color wheel in a clockwise direction. So as we crank up the phase on red, it's getting pinker and pinker and pinker because it's moving towards magenta. So red plus magenta makes a pinkish color. So our red, what was a very pure red, is now very, very pink. What happens if we send it the other way towards yellow? It's going to get oranger and oranger and oranger. So you can see it's pretty simple to manipulate these colors. To do it effectively and efficiently, you really do need a vector scope. So you can see where the colors are and how you've moved it. The vector scope in the camera is very basic. It, it's not really detailed enough to, to let you really do serious color correction in the camera. I found it more useful to use an external recorder, something like uh, Odyssey 7Q+, Plus, uh, Sound Devices Pixie 5, maybe an Atomos. They have much more detailed uh, vector scopes. So if you get a hold of a color wheel and you use that external monitor's vector scope, like what in my example, I was using the one from the Odyssey, it's a lot easier to see the detail here. And then if you wanna use this to actually do some real solid work, an example of what you can do is match a different camera. So you can make a profile for the UX180 that makes it look like another camera. And so you would take a shot of a color chart or a color wheel on the camera that you're trying to match. And what I do as I use a, a clear overlay, a clear acrylic overlay, right on the monitor, and I just mark circles of where all the color vectors hit. And then I put up the UX180 on pointed at the same chart and look at where the color vectors are hitting on it. And then go into the color correction setting and just using these commands, move the saturation and move the phase until all the color vectors line up. Having done that, you're going to find that your color palette's going to be a pretty good match between these two cameras. I hope that's helped demystify and explain how these various color correction options work and that you're now able to and empowered to paint the camera to get the kind of look that you're looking for from it. Stay tuned to this video series for even more videos and more tips and tricks on how to use your UX camera. Panasonic.